Welcome back to Tech Tips. U.S. Army Reserve shooting team member Sergeant First Class Keith Sanderson is an Olympian, having competed in the 2008 Summer Olympics in the International Rapid Fire Pistol Discipline. He is also the current U.S. record holder in that discipline. In this segment, filmed on location at an Army Reserve shooting team session, Sergeant Sanderson shares some of his insights. Well, uh analogy that Richard Feynman came up with. I don't know if does anyone here know who Richard Feynman is? Anybody? He's a physicist. That's right. He's a theoretical physicist and the Hatton Project when he was a grad student. He's, he's a smart dude. He was talking about theoretical physics when he came up with this analogy, but it applies to marksmanship. Imagine now you're in a room you've never been in before and it's, the lights are off and it's dark. If you just stay in one spot in that room, you won't learn anything about it. You'll never be able to operate in that room, right? But if you bump your way around and you walk around, oh, there's a sofa here and there's a chair over here. After a while, like you were blind, you'd be able to get a general idea of what's in the room and how to operate in that room. Everyone understand that? See that, if you will? Marksmanship is the same way. If you don't out here training, you're not going to learn anything about it. You can listen to all the classes you want to, you're not really going to learn anything about the room, which is marksmanship. But if you bump around enough and you come out here training, you guys, will, as you will start learning this week, you start learning more and more about what that room is of marksmanship. Has everyone, has everyone seen a little bit of that so far? Hopefully. Now, every now and then, you find a light switch. And the lights come on. And everything is illuminated. Now, unfortunately, I can't tell you where the light switch is. You have to find that for yourself. And, and I don't know how many of you, if any of you, have ever found a light switch. Unfortunately, there's a whole bunch of them. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to tell you one little part of the room today, and that is about the lift. The, the lift is an international term we use internationally for the presentation of a pistol from a 45 degree angle or from the, 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 the alert, right? It's the alert, is that what they call it? From, from the alert up to the target to fire your first round. There's two things that have to happen to have a good lift. They, they seem simple on their own, but they're going to be very, very hard to execute. And it's something I expect you guys to do today. Personally, I don't care if you guys shoot good today. I don't care if I shoot good today or tomorrow or the next day. I care if you guys shoot good next month. Okay, anyone understand that, that idea? What you do here today is to support next month, not for today. So I'm not giving you any instantaneous results. I don't say anything that's going to work without training. So there were things that were said before, like grip and things like that. Without training yet, it's not going to work. I'm assuming, being disciplined soldiers, you guys are all going to train after this. So with the lift, what it allows you to do is it allows you to produce the most accurate first shot you can and the fastest first shot you can. So before I go into the right way, I'm going to say that's for special purposes only is downrange. This is a, a, a working now, hopefully. M9, clear? Clear. Does anyone have any questions whether this weapon's clear or not? Nope. Okay, and again, this is downrange. Anyone have any objections with that? Okay. Now, what a lot of you are doing, and myself too, because I'm untrained right now, haven't been training, and I will fix that over the next month, is you look at the target, right? Because you have to get PID. You have to find out which target you're aiming at, right? Does everyone understand that? PID. So you, you don't know what PID is? Positive identification. Positive identification? Oh. It's an Army army thing? Okay. You know what a first sergeant is? You in the Army. <laughs> okay. So you're going to get PID, right? Once you get PID, you're down here at the alert. And what do you guys do to fire the first shot? You bring the pistol to your, to your line of sight, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously. So you want, you want to look at your sights, unless it's that last match you're shooting here from the hip. You're going to bring the pistol up to, up to your, your line of sight, and then what do you do? Side line of sight, picture engage. And then what? Side line of sight, picture engage. Side line of sight, picture, and what, what do you do next? Trigger. Engage. You move the trigger. So if you want to get really, really <coughs> fast doing it that way, what are you going to do? You have to go and then start squeezing, right? That doesn't work in real life. It doesn't work if you're physically or mentally stressed. It's not going to, well, maybe after this new patent match where it's only a 100-yard sprint, you probably will. After, after two miles, you're going to have problems with that. 
because your eyes aren't going to work the same way. What happens when you, when you present the weapon like that is your eyes are going to stay fixated on the target. Do you think in real life if it's a live person in front of you, your eyes are going to move back to your sights? No. And you fight how you train, right? So if you train that way, there's no way it's going to happen in real life. So what we're going to do is, there's the two parts to the right proper lift. The first part is dropping the eyes. On the presentation, what's going to happen is, and just, I'm not pulling the trigger yet, it's just, it's just the first part. Take one of these. Thanks, sir. I'm taking my cover off my eyeglasses. I want you guys to, to look at my eyes. I do it, I do it left-handed. That way uh, you guys can see, my, can see this eye. All right, now what's going to happen, I'm going to go in slow motion first. As I'm coming up, I get PID on target. About halfway up, my eyes are going to drop. And they're going to follow my sights into alignment. Having your eyes drop about halfway does two things. One, it breaks you from the target. It breaks your eyes from the target. The second thing it does, which is equally important, is your eyes are naturally attracted to things that are moving. In your field of view, what's the only thing moving at that point in time? Your pistol is. Specifically, what's the top of your pistol? Your sights. Your eyes are automatically going to be drawn to your sights, trying to align your sights. So that's the first part. Sounds easy. It's hard to do in practice. So it's going to look like this. Again. Your eyes have to drop about halfway. They have to. If you were to look at the Olympics, use women's sport pistol as an example because men's rapid fire pistol, everybody has five different targets and it's spread out of more. But women, there's in the final, the top eight in the world are all lined up eight in a row. And there's cameras everywhere. So you'll find a camera angle where you can see it. And you can look it up on, on YouTube. If you look at them, every single one of the top women in the world speak all different languages from all different parts of the world, all different coaches. Every single one of them speaks the, the fundamentals of marksmanship in a different language. Their eyes drop all exactly the same spot. What does that tell you? It tells you it's the only way to do it. It is the only right way. There is no other way that is correct. The other, the other ways that do it are the people who didn't make the final, the people who aren't in the Olympics, who aren't good enough. So there's a reason why it works, because it is the only way.